Okay, so this is 2013 and it is question one. So the first thing I ask is explain each of the following terms. So sample space, um, that is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. The second thing it wants to know is mutually exclusive events. So events E and F are mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common. So if E union F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. So basically there's nothing in the intersection. And then um, independent events is two events are independent if the outcome of one does not depend on the other outcome, on the outcome of the other. So the probability of um, E intersection F is equal to the probability of E, the probability of F, or the probability of E given F is equal to the probability of E, or the probability of um, F given E, and that's equal to the probability of F. Right, so it'll make more sense what that example means. I'm going to go through an example here. So in the class of 30 students, 20 study physics, 6 study biology, and 4 study physics and biology. Uh, represent the information on a Venn diagram. Okay, so my universe set 30, 20 here, 6 here. This is just it filled in. So 4 are in both, so I'll put the 4 here. 16 is out here. Um, this has sat up to 6, so 2 is out here, and then out my universe is just 8. So then I'm asked by calculating the probabilities, investigate if the events E and F are independent. So I have to get, um, um, here it says a student is selected at random from this class, the events E and F are. So um, the student study physics, okay, and the student studies biology. So the probability that they study um, E intersection F is 4 over 30. The probability that they study E and they study um, biology is 20 over 30 multiplied by 6 over 30 and that's equal to 4 over 30. So what I have here is that the probability of the intersection is equal to the probability of E multiplied by the probability of F. So E and F are independent events. That's what that definition means um, up there. Um, then what I have here I have um, the variable x follows a normal distribution with mean 60 and standard deviation of 5. Find the probability that x is less than or equal to 68. So I have to get my z score, I have to standardize it. So z is equal to x minus my mean all over my standard deviation. My x value is 68 minus my mean is 60 all over 5. So z is equal to 1.6. So the probability that the z is less than or equal to 1.6, get this from my log tables, is just 0 0.9452. Then I have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 52 and x is less than um, 68. So I've already found out this part of it, so I just need to go off and do my 52. So when I get my 52, I get minus 1.6. And we know that that's the same as positive 1.6 because we can't get a negative value in my log tables. So I have to get um, the probability that z is greater than uh, minus 1.6 and probability that z is less than 1.6. Um, six. So I get the probability z is um, less than minus 1.6 is equal to the probability z is greater than 1.6 um, because we always take the positive value but we need to minus it then. So I go 1 minus this probability. So I get 1 minus 0 0.9452 is equal to um, 0 0.0548. So then because I'm trying to find an area in between two curves, um, I have to get um, the bigger value take away the smaller value. Okay, so it's my bigger value, which is, we found it up here, 0 0.9452 minus my smaller value, which we just found, and that gives me um, 0 0.8094. Um, what I have here then, um, I was basically asked the effect of each hormone is described in each page, sketching the each diagram a new distribution showing the effect of the hormone. Okay, so the effect of hormone A was to increase the height of all of the plants. If the height after increasing, my mean is also going away after um, increasing. Okay, so it looks something like this. Um, then what I would have is the effect of hormone B was to reduce the number of really small plants and the number of really tall plants. Okay, so obviously my... If my tall plants, my small plants, they be falling out here, if I'm reducing them, it's going to be coming inside and my mean is staying the same. So that's why my mean stays um, there. Then the effect of hormone C was to increase the number of small plants and the number of tall plants. So that's why I'm actually going outside my curve because I'm increasing my number. Okay. And then the mean was unchanged. So the mean is just going to stay the same there. Okay. So that's where I have my peak at. And that is that question fully completed.